So this one was sent by Afiwe. Okay, it says, it's a picture of the eye. So if I don't draw like this, you've got to be, bear with me, all right? I'm not going to make artist of the year. Okay, it says the diagram shows the response of the human eye. And we're looking at two different conditions. So in diagram one, how are we looking for time? Diagram one, we have got, jeez, this person's got perfect eyebrows. I mean, look how beautiful. And another perfect eyebrow. Wow, girls, I'm sure you can appreciate these eyebrows. And then we've got a very pretty eye. And we've got Jeez, and this person looks like they've got false eyelashes as well. I mean, look at these eyelashes. Let me just draw them here. Go zoom, 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 zoom. Gorgeous eyelashes. Okay. And then we've got the same eye. Okay. You're, you're going to have, it's the same eye. So just use your imagination. And here, we're sitting with a little area like that. And also, these beautiful, long, 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 it's the same eye, by the way, guys. So just, okay. And then diagram B, or diagram two. Zip this down. Okay, diagram two, we've got the diagram of the eye. So I'm going to draw this the other way around. So that's, okay, never mind, let me do it this way. So we go there and there. And, okay, and then we've got this layer comes in here. No. <laughs> okay, and then blips. Um, and I've drawn this incredibly wrong. So let me just make this thinner and Okay, and we've got this little guy that's there and suspensory ligaments um, no, I'm going to have to redo this eye again. Sorry. <sighs> okay, I need space. Okay, we're going to go, let me do this one first. So you go. Oi. And then we've got the sclera, and the sclera extends into the transparent cornea. Okay, and then over here we've got um, the iris, and we've got the ciliary muscle, and that goes there. And then we have the retina, which is here. Okay, and then on this side it comes down, iris, bubble. And we have the retina. Okay, this is C. Now on, uh, hang on, and then here we've got the suspensory ligament, and we have a very nice round lens. Now we have exactly the same again, and and sclera, transparent choroid, uh, um, cornea. Sclera, okay, and then we go iris, choroid layer, and retina. And this side, iris, ciliary muscle, and retina. Okay, and this is A, and yeah, we got suspensory ligaments. 
and we have a very long thin lens okay and this is b all right now it says uh first we write our labels in so here this diagram is pupillary function okay and pupillary function is about light going into the eye. Now, the way you remember it is when the pupil is little, then it's bright. And when it's big, it's dark. Okay? Now, if we look at Okay, clearly you know that that's the pupil, and this is the iris. Right. Here, we're seeing the eye from the side, and this diagram is showing us a carmodation. The first label here is the sclera. Remember, this layer here is the choroid, which contains pigment, and blood vessels. Whereas the sclera is just white and fibrous. Okay, and then that is your retina. And the retina contains your rod cells to see in dim light and your cone cells, and remember cone for color. Okay, there's the iris. Okay, this is your lens. And your lens is elastic. And um, this here is your ciliary muscle. Okay. And this is going to be a nice, a nice um, uh, round, ay, 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 round convex lens. And this lens is a nice, long, thin, less convex lens. Accommodation is so that you can focus on objects near or far away. And pupillary function is so that your, it's, that this is, oh, by the way, involuntary. This is involuntary. In other words, it is a re uh, reflex action. Okay, you do not think when you walk into a room that is darker or lighter or you walk from inside outside for your pupil to close because if it doesn't, if that iris doesn't close up and your pupil doesn't get small, you will be blind. Okay, you will damage your retina and you'll end up, not, you'll end up going blind. So it's a completely involuntary function. You don't have to think about it. Okay, so it says here, identify parts A, B, C. We've done it. Okay, A is the sclera, B is the lens, and C are your ciliary muscles. Okay, then it says identify the process in diagram one. That is your pupillary functioning. Okay, it's the pupil closing so that you can, I mean the iris closing around the pupil so that you can see. Um, Identify the process in diagram one, and then I can't see what the rest of the question, of oh, diagram one, um, the process at A, B, and C. So if I look at the process at A, the process at, no, it can't be, it must be parts. So identify the parts A, B, C. I don't know what, I, what this question, oh, uh, hang on, I, I see what happened. Is they photostated, they've printed, a repeat of the question. Okay. Identify the process in one is pupil function. Name the part of the eye um, that is responsible for the, re for the response in diagram one. The part of the eye with that would be responsible would be the iris. Okay. And then state the consequence of a person's vision. If the process in diagram two does not occur, you will not be able to see close or far. Now, I just want to show you this quickly. Um, when, if this is your pupil, and this 
is your iris. The iris has circular muscles and radial muscles. Okay, so that's these are radial muscles. And these are circular muscles. Circular muscles. Okay, and this is the hole. This is your pupil. So when it is bright, the pupil is small. When it is a dim light, the pupil is large. Why? Because here you want to let in less light. And here you want to let in lots of light. Okay, so how does this work? When you walk into a bright light, we want the pupil to be small. So the first thing that happens is the sur Circular muscles contract and the pupil will contract. See, circular muscles contract, the pupil constricts, and radial muscles. must relax. Why? Because they work antagonistically. Remember, they can't pull against each other. My finger does this. These muscles contract, those must relax. If I open my finger, those must contract and those must relax. They work antagonistically. They work opposite. So your circular and your radial muscles work opposite. So for bright light, your circular muscles contract and the pupils constrict. And the radial muscles Chill, they relax. So we're looking at C, 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 R for bright light. Okay? Now, when it is dim or it is dark, we have the opposite. In fact, I'm going to do it here. When we have, let's do it blue. When we have dim light or it is dark, the circular muscles are going to relax. The pupil will dilate and the radial muscles will not relax, they will contract. So learn that because that's easy to learn. And then for dim light or when it's dark and the pupil is large, it is exactly the opposite. Circular muscles will relax, the pupil will dilate, means it will get big, and the radial muscles will contract. Done, done, done and dusted. You only have to learn four points, you can get eight marks. Okay, for accommodation, let's just zip this off here. No, why is it not do what I wanted to do? Okay, there we go. For accommodation, okay, there's your ciliary muscle. And here's your ciliary muscle. Attached to the ciliary muscle are your suspensory ligaments. Okay, and there's your ciliary muscle, ciliary muscle. Okay, and we've got our suspensory ligaments here, and here is the lens. Now, this little lens will make it nice and round. So, if it is round, it is therefore more convex. Therefore, you'll have more refract which means bending of light. Okay? Which means this is going to be for close. Let me move the screen up a little bit. Okay, this is for near vision. So we're looking at something that is close. Okay, we have a nice round lens so it can refract the light more. Okay? And the suspensory ligaments are going to be slack 
because they are going to let go. They're going to be all nice and slack. Uh, uh, no, what am I talking about? That, mm, you see, they've just told me I've got three minutes, so I'm panicking here. Um, the suspensory ligaments are going to be slack. Okay? And when they are slack, the little lens can go nice and round. It's all nice and round. Everything's chilled. The opposite applies when it is for distant vision or far vision. When you want to see far away, this, oh, hang on, sorry, and your ciliary muscles are contracting. Okay? Then, when you want to look far away, the ciliary muscle pulls backwards. It relaxes. Opposite. The, the, the suspensory ligaments pull tight. Or we say they pull taut. They become taut. Yeah. And what happens? If they pull backwards and they pull tight, this lens goes long. And when the lens is long and flattened, okay, therefore it is less convex. Therefore, uh, um, less refraction, which means less bending of the light. Okay, there you go. Easy peasy. Learn one, you know the other. Okay, folks, that is as much as I can get through today. Next week, I want to do um, paper two revision. So we're looking at DNA, the code of life, which you all battle with. And I don't know why. So um, protein synthesis we're going to cover so that you can never, ever get a bad question on protein synthesis. You will always get full marks for it. So remember, DNA. So, hmm, so far we've done DNA and uh, genetics. So send in your questions, please. Um, and whatever I get, I'm going to put on. But anything you're battling with. So even if you want me to, you don't have a full question, but there's something that you want me to explain that you're battling with, let me do it. Okay, so for all of you, from me to you, have an awesome, safe week. Work hard. School starts on Monday. And you know what? I know you're going to be fine. All right, so just believe, trust, look after yourself, take care, and have an awesome week until Wednesday. Mwah! Mwah!